Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Parameter Estimation. And here we're looking at minimally sufficient statistics and using maximum likelihood estimation to find that minimally sufficient statistic. Theorem 1 says uh, let T, I guess it should be, be a statistic, sufficient for theta. Assume that a maximum likelihood estimator for theta exists, then there exists an MLE theta hat for theta that is a function of our statistic T. Notice that it's a function of the data and that's what makes it a statistic. So the proof is this, by the Neyman Fisher factorization, since T is sufficient we can factor it like this. And then if we take the log of both sides we get this line. Now maximizing the log of the um, likelihood is equivalent to maximizing the log of this function k now um, which is you know the arg max of theta of the log of this function k that's we get theta hat and this is a function of our statistic t so when we plug in values here we increase it, we lower it, and then somewhere it makes this function a maximum. It's a function of, of our statistic, right? Thus, if an MLE exists for theta, then there exists an MLE that is a function of our statistic. End of proof. Now, an illustration, let's say we have a likelihood like this, where it has a unique likelihood. Then clearly, this can be a function of theta or our statistic t but if we have a likelihood like this remember the theorem says if a likelihood exists so these are two situations where that's true so if it if it goes up and then it's flat and then goes down then it's usually these endpoints here where they're functions of the statistic the sufficient statistic now there's some creative people that create maximum likelihood estimators in here that are not solely functions of our sufficient statistic. And I'll let you search that if you want. But note here that we use sufficient statistic T. And for argument's sake, let's call it T1. Now let's use sufficient statistic 2, T, call it T2. And What's the maximum likelihood of estimator in this case? Well, it's going to be that number. What if we use sufficient statistic 3, T3? You know, and then we um, partition it and we find the maximum likelihood with using T3. It's still going to be this number. The maximum likelihood is this number, right? So that we can create functions of sufficient statistics that equal this maximum likelihood value. And actually, that's an argument for theorem four when we get to it, is that if the maximum likelihood estimator is unique, it's actually a function of every sufficient statistic out there, right? Which means it's minimal. Theorem two, let xi be distributed with, uh, with f. Let l be the likelihood which is, of course, the joint density or distribution. The likelihood L is sufficient for theta. Here's a quick little proof. Let H be 1. Let K be this function. Now, K is, um, you know, given theta, it evaluates L. And then L, of course, is given, theta, given X. It's a random variable of theta. But K conditions on that. For a given theta, then it evaluates the likelihood. So for a given theta, the function K evaluates L. So let's partition our joint distribution into this. So H, of course, is 1. And then K was this. You know, they equal. So thus, by the Fisher name and factorization, the likelihood is a sufficient for theta. Now, theorem 3 is this. Let xi, i equals 1 to n, be iid, which is independently, identically distributed from this uh, 
F. So a, a density or a distribution. And that's also the likelihood where theta is in the parameter space omega, x is in the uh, sample space S. There exists an H greater than zero such that the likelihood divided by H is minimally sufficient for theta. Here's a, a quick little proof of it. From theorem 2, the likelihood is sufficient for theta. Now let P of theta be a PDF on omega such that, you know, it integrates to 1, so it's a true PDF, and that H is equal to the integral of, you know, over the entire parameter space of our likelihood times that PDF, and it, you know, and make it it's greater than 0. And that's, it has to be true for all x in our sample space. Now let t be the likelihood divided by h, where h is defined like this. Remember the likelihood is also the uh, joint distribution or density. Now let's let x and y be in our sample space. And then that means f of x, you know, the, the function or the density of x, you know, using our data x, you know, of course is greater than zero. And since y is in our sample space, using f of x of y is also greater than zero. Then, and we can create this ratio such that it's independent or does not depend upon theta. And you might think about how that's true. And it's true is if we have a sufficient statistic and this data, x, you know, our sufficient statistic t of x is equal to our sufficient statistic t of y, then this is the case. It does not depend upon theta. Then, this is true. So, t of x, by, we defined it like this. It's equal to this, and then we multiply it times one, right? This divided by that, that divided by this, is one. But f of x over f of y is what we are calling this r of x of y. It's free of theta. Then we have uh, h of y over h of x, and then this right here was our definition of t, so it's t of y. Now, this next step, um, 1 is equal to this integral, and the reason is if you um, evaluate or if you go look at the definition of t and plug it in, then it's essentially an integral divided by the same integral, and it's 1. So this, I'm going to leave that to you to do. But t, right, we said was this, so we plug it in. And that comes out because these functions are free of theta. You know, they don't live in the parameter space omega. And then this is the integral. Now, this integrates to 1, right? So we're left with just this right here. Now, r of x, of course, is, you know, it's the ratio of f of x and f of y times this, but it's equal to 1, so you can multiply and divide certain things over, and we get this equation, these two equal. Now, this is what we were calling t of x, and this is t of y. So, the pre so by previous video, minimally sufficient statistics, if you watch that, we just went through the theorem in this video showing all the requirements that t is minimally sufficient for theta. So theorem 4, and this is the main theorem, suppose theta hat is the unique MLE of theta. Let t of x be a minimally sufficient statistic for theta. 1 exists by theorem 3. By theorem 1, an MLE exists that's a function of T of X, our, our sufficient statistic. And by assumption, theta hat is unique, 
and a function of t of x, which is a minimally sufficient statistic. Since t of x is minimally sufficient, it is a function of every sufficient statistic, and thus our MLE theta hat is a function of every sufficient statistic. And that's proof. So if the MLE is unique, then it is a minimally sufficient statistic. And that's another way to find minimally sufficient statistics. Now technically we do not need theorems 2 and 3 to prove this. I just added those in for just more knowledge, you know, what people do out there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.